It's been about five years that Land Rover introduced the new Discovery Sport and with it the successor of the Freelander. The Discovery Sport is the most successful car of the brand with nearly 500,000 units sold and today that car receives an update and so I'm driving the car to find out how it drives, what new features are on board and what is really new with a new Discovery Sport. With a width of more than two meters, the front of the Land Rover Discovery Sport really looks quite impressive. And during the facelift, the car received a new grille and a completely new front bumper. Important with the front bumper is we're driving the car on the trim level called R Dynamics, so the most sporty version. And so we have a quite different bumper down here with a splitter. Uh, if you buy the standard car, you do have this in yeah, dark plastic and without this extra air intake here. And very important, with the facelift, the car now comes as standard with LED headlamps. You can order Matrix LED if you want, but that'll cost you about 2,000 euros extra. Our test car features the big diesel engine, which is the 2-litre four-cylinder turbo engine that delivers 177 kilowatts or 240 horsepower and 500 newton meters of maximum torque. And this is a standard combined with all-wheel drive and an automatic gearbox. And this package really works very well with the Land Rover Discovery Sport. You always have the feeling of having more than enough power. You can really drive the car if you want, quite smooth and easy and a bit more sporty if you want. And the car or the engine really works easily with this two tons of a vehicle. The Discovery Sport features the most important driver safety and assistance systems as standard. So it comes always with a um, emergency brake assist, it comes with a lane assist and it also comes with a rear view camera. Um, on top of this you will always have a cruise control on board but you can of course order a lot more like a rear cross traffic alert, an adaptive cruise control, a park assist and on and on and so you can configure the car the way you want. At the rear of the Discovery Sport you can really see how high it is. It's 1 meter 73 and very important with that car is depending on the trim level and the extras you buy, you will find LED taillights including a dynamic indicator. And to give our car a bit more sporty look, we do find this diffuser down here and these, yeah, let's say, fake exhausts because we're driving the trim level R Dynamic that looks a bit different with a standard car. But I think that car really looks from the rear a lot like a standard Discovery and I really do like it. There were two goals which Land Rover wanted to achieve with a new Discovery Sport. One is the car should be more comfortable and the other it should be more agile and they really achieved both. So when I started driving the car I instantly recognized it was a lot more quiet than its predecessor and when you then drive this mountain roads here with all these tight bends and curves you instantly feel that the car is yeah let's say more solid on the road and I think a lot better and easier to control. The interior of the Discovery Sport was lifted to a different level. So wherever you touch now, you will only find soft touch materials, no plastic at all anymore. On top of this, the car received a new gear shift, which is the one from the uh, Range Rover Sport, and they lifted the center console by 90 millimeters. And that really provides you more space beneath that. And therefore you now find a 7.3 liter compartment beneath the armrest. At the side you can see that the headlamps running quite into the really side of the car and then on top we do find a very short hood and a very flat front window as with its predecessor. Important with the car is when you look at the rims here, as standard the Discovery Sport features 17 inch alloys but our car is featuring the 21 inch alloys. Important here is they, yeah, you have to pay extra and they cost you depending on the trim level up to more than 3,000 euros. Uh, when you look at the whole size of the car, it is 4 meters 60 long, so nearly exactly the same as the predecessor, and it still features a wheelbase of 2 meters 74. And of course, it is a Land Rover, so it also features 21 centimeters of ground clearance. Important here is new, when you look at this uh, wheel arches here, you do find claddings, but with our car, because we're driving the R Dynamics trim level, we do find them in the same color as the car. It is the same down here with the side here, and this gives the car a bit more sporty look with the standard because they come in yeah, dark plastic. And one thing that is new is this um, flat here at the side, and this really provides the car a bit more, yeah, 
closer to the ground, so it makes the car a bit more sporty. And then looking at the rest, the shape of the car is very similar to the predecessors. We do find a slightly dropping roof line, and of course we do find, yeah, the side rear of the car, that reminds me a lot to his big brother, the big Discovery. The space the car offers for the driver and the co-driver is really more than sufficient. Me, I'm nearly two meters tall, I sit very comfortably in the car, I have still some headroom left and I can pull the steering wheel quite close to me, which I really like for having the feeling of controlling the car. And the good thing with this, this car is it also offers more than enough space on the next row and this is something we tried out by having a short stop. So I just stopped and jumped on the rear bench and as you can see I do sit comfortably. I still have space left in front of my knees. I do have space left above my head, not much, but a little. Important is I didn't change the position of the driver's seat. I'm nearly two meters tall and I can easily sit behind myself. And the good thing with the Discovery Sport is now you can move the rear bench so a bit more forward if you want more boot capacity or a bit more backward to provide more legroom, just the way you want. If you want more comfort inside of your Land Rover, you can now order a head-up display for the car, which really gives you all the most important information projected on the front screen, quite nice and easy. And you can now order the seats here at the front, not only heated, but also ventilated if you want. The seats in our test car can not only be heated and cooled, they also offer a massage function, which I really do enjoy during my drive. On top they really deliver more than enough comfort. The only downside is I would love to have a bit more support because when you drive the car a bit more sporty or you may go off-road that really gives you yeah the support you want to stay in your seat without feeling your back. In terms of its load capacity the Discovery Sport is competing very well. Both the Mercedes GLC and the BMW X3 deliver with 550 to 1,600 liters significantly less space in the trunk in both seating configurations. With a base price of 37,000 euros for the front wheel powered 150 horsepower turbo diesel manual, the Discovery looks significantly cheaper than its direct competitors at first glance. A BMW starts at 45,000 euros and a Mercedes GLC is even slightly more expensive. But both models offers four-wheel drive as well as an automatic transmission as standards. However, if you choose a comparable drivetrain for the Land Rover, the world looks different. The 200 horsepower petrol engine version with four-wheel drive and automatic costs from 48,900 euros onwards. And so it is even more expensive than the cars from Munich or Stuttgart. So I'm driving off-road with my Discovery Sport now and the first impression I get is, yeah, it's a Land Rover. This is his place to be. The Discovery Sport is featuring the new terrain response system of Land Rover. And this is something you can really feel which really helps you when you drive up and down off-road. Uh, because that system delivers the torque to the wheel where it is needed most and it can also lock the rear axle differential lock automatically uh, when, it's get, when it's getting really rough and so this is something that is more than helpful when you drive off-road with your new Discovery Sport. At the moment you can order three diesel and two petrol engines for the new Land Rover Discovery Sport and they deliver power range between 150 up to 249 horsepower. Important is to know that all of them are four-cylinder engines and Except the smallest uh, diesel with 150 horsepower, which is a manual front wheel power car, all the others deliver S standard all wheel drive and an automatic gearbox. And all of them are also so called mild hybrids, which means you have a 48 volt boss system and you do have on top a starter generator, which recuperates energy. At the end of this year, you can on top order a, a so called three cylinder plug in hybrid, which then works together with an electric engine and that provides you a fully electric, so emission free drive as well. Another new feature of the Discovery Sport is a system which we already know from the new Evoque. It's called ClearSight Smart View and this is nothing different than a camera based rear view mirror. The camera is mounted on top of the roof inside the antenna and provides you with a live picture into your rear view mirror. And you can decide if you want to use the standard mirror or this live picture. The good thing with the system is it offers you a wider angle to watch at and the other thing is if you for instance have people on the rear seats or you may load the car up to the top, 
with this system you can, yeah, let's say, look through these items and still have an absolutely nice and clear view to the rear of the car. I really do like the steering of the car because it's precise without being nervous and really works well. The only little downside is that it always tries to center the steering wheel, which is not unusual, but it tries to center it a bit more than other cars. And this is something where I need to say, yeah, if we talk about comfort, this is a short, little, tiny minus. The Discovery Sport offers as a five-seater a boot capacity of 897 liters with the rear seats up. If you fold them down, that increases up to 1,794 liters. If you order the car as a seven-seater, these numbers going down by about 100 to 150 liter, depending on the seat position. Important is you can have an electric tailgate as an optional feature, and I would like to order that because with that one, with the mechanic one, it's so low when the boot is open that I hit my head quite often. The road is getting a bit more rough at the moment and the good thing is that the Discovery Sport's featuring 21 centimeters of ground clearance which gives you a bit of freedom and not thinking all the time, ah, I'm going to damage my car. A new system in the Discovery Sport is called Clearside Ground View and that is working with a camera at the front of the car and that is projecting the, yeah, the path of my wheels into the car and so I can really see obstacles while driving off-road and the good thing is if you just want to park your car you will not hit any piece of concrete because you will instantly see it. So now it goes a bit more downhill and um, the nose to the ground, but yeah, that works smooth and easy as with any other Land Rover. Of course, the Discovery Sport features different drive modes and one of them is an off-road mode, but I use most of the time the so-called automatic motors because the car will instantly recognize what it needs to do or change to provide me with the best support possible. Regarding to the fact sheet, our Discovery Sport D240 should take about 6.5 liters per 100 kilometer driven. We didn't match that number during our test drive. We used about 8 liters. But I think if you drive the car more sporty, more agile, you should expect something between 9, let's say up to 10 liters. But I still think that that number is absolutely fair for a 2 ton SUV with 240 horsepower. But still, I'm looking to the future and hope that we may find cars which will then use less fuel. That was my first test drive with the new Land Rover Discovery Sport. It's nice to see that that car still features all the good things of the predecessor, like off-roading, very nice, and even more space than its predecessor. On top of this, it's more quiet, more comfortable, more agile, and it does feature now new engines, like all mild hybrids except the smallest one and if you want in the near future you can order a plug-in hybrid as well. On top of this you get new infotainment systems, loads of new assistance systems and all of this in a revised very nice shell and if you want with seven seats as an option.